<laughs> That's all I need. Happy <laughs> Thursday, everybody. Sorry, Steve and I were just talking. How you all doing? And uh, I'm back, and um, I hope everybody's doing well. So I believe I'm live. Yep, here we go. So I've got internet connection. So first and foremost, before I get into my topic tonight, welcome everybody and hello and, and uh, happy Thursday. My book is not currently open. So and I get about I get a lot of emails asking uh, how do I book a reading and my book is currently closed just until I navigate through some of these waters um, like I'd mentioned before with my mom's health and me regenerating and things like that. One of the things about readings is it takes a lot out of you. So I, I'm not a machine. I don't do readings like a machine. So I have no interest in doing it like that. So I have to do it at my pace and also at Isaac's pace. So uh, that's number one. So secondly, I want to say thank you to everybody so who signed up for Isaac's course. It just blew me away. And I um, was not anticipating that amount of people to sign up. So I wasn't. So apparently everybody loves Isaac and they want to know what's going on um, about his life and what's happening and all that. So here's how it's going to work. Just I just I was talking to Catherine earlier, and I wanted to I wanted to ask her. So, um, it is a, a digital course. It is a Zoom class, but you will see me just like Facebook Live. You will not see all the rest of the people on there. You'll be able to ask questions. I'll be able to ask you questions and things like that. So it's going to be one on one, and um, just like you see me now. But you're not going to see all those screens that you see on Zoom. Um, it would be horrible, as Isaac says. So we're going to keep it very simple like this here, and then he's going to get into that. So tonight I want to talk about a couple of things. And uh, hello, um, what do you call it, everybody? Uh, I see someone from the UK. It's 1 a.m. And I want to um, just answer a question that somebody asked me. In regards to uh, Isaac not coming back and choosing to be a guide, was he able to see his family still? And the answer to the question is yes. I thought it was a great question. Um, and the question was simply, you know, when he passed over, could he still see his family? Could he still see the people that he loved and lost when he grew up with? And the answer is yes. So just because he decided to be a guide doesn't mean that he couldn't be um, anything other than that there. So he does get to see his family. He gets to see all his friends. He gets to see all the people that he talks about. And, um, you know, he's looking forward to this class. One of the things he has not told me, I'm a little nervous, is what's happening in this class. And he says, I was talking to him today. I was mowing. And he said, Phil, it's my class. I'm getting to teach it. And you're, you know, you get to repeat it. So, uh, he's very excited about all of this here, so and he's excited to tell his story and he's excited to educate you all. And that's Isaac's main purpose as a guide is to educate. His his job is to educate. Now the other thing that people are asking me is, can they have a reading with Isaac? And the answer is that yeah. It, the answer to that is yes. It's a little different than a regular reading because Isaac sees the future very clearly. And what his job is, he will set you on your path. He will tell you where you are, what's happening, where you're going, what you're doing, how to divert certain things, and then how to get back on it. But he can only give you certain information. And what I mean by that is he's not going to give you the lot of numbers, okay? So, but he is going to tell you how to get to a job. He is going to tell you how to get your kid through whatever the situation is. He is going to tell you how to make yourself better. So he is. So, um, it's uh, that's one of the things he's doing. I'm seeing somebody saying here, I keep finding dimes. Finding dimes is a beautiful sign from the other side. And it often comes from two things, from the, uh, family members that we have lost, parents, or our children. And typically, our kids are the ones that leave uh, dimes and our moms and dads. So, and they want to give these strong um, messages that I'm here. And they show up out of nowhere. Like, you could clean the whole house and you could turn around and there's a dime on the floor. And you're like, I just vacuumed here. How is this even possible? Or you find it in your bed. And then another, another sign is... Um, Another sign is Catherine's telling me to speak louder. Another sign is the lights. When the lights start flickering, that's when the other side comes through. 
And as they're coming through, they're using the electrical current in order to communicate. So they need an electrical current in order to sustain themselves in the room. And what they do is they pull from that vibe and they pull from that energy. And that's what gives them, um, that's what gives them, say it again, Isaac, that's what gives us the energy to sustain ourselves here um, on earth. So you'll also notice that, and this is one of the things that's always fascinated me is the par paranormal. And, you know, I never really get into it, but it always happens around power plants or high electrical voltage, so it is. So, and entities need that type of energy in order to manifest. So, and Isaac's saying that, why would an uh, entity want to manifest? Well, two things happen. When you pass over, you immediately go to the light. When you decide that you don't want to go to the light, because you have unfinished business or you were young and you died and you want to stay with your family or whatever the situation may be. Um, what happens is you remain here on earth. Well, what happens is the door closes, not permanently. It does close. It, it, and it's you're saying, I'm not ready to cross into heaven. I'm not leaving my family. I'm not doing any of that. So time starts to pass by. And let's say after the death, your husband moves out of the house, your wife moves out of the house, you lose a child, you sell the house, whatever the situation may be. Now, at times they come with us, or at times they have an attachment to the home. So, you have a soul that's attached to the house, you have a new buyer that's coming into the house, and as the new buyer comes in, they start to remodel, knocking down walls, doing this and that, and then what happens is, there's an overlap of time. So, the entity and our, our current time overlap each other. And as that happens, the entity sees all of this construction going on. And it's like, what's happening in my house? Because it doesn't know, because it's earthbound. It doesn't know that it, its family has moved out because all it remembers is what took place before it passed. So then that's when movement starts to take place. The reason I'm talking about this, Isaac says, is a lot of people have talked about ghosts and a lot of people have talked about entities. A lot of people have talked about certain things happening in their house. And that's what's the reason why it happens. When the time overlaps, our time and their time, they can see one another. And then that's when they move cups. That's when they play with the lights. That's when they start doing things to try and get your attention. So it's quite fascinating on how some of these things take place. So it is so, but your guides protect you. So you're not in a place where you're not being protected, but your guides protect you. And they protect you in the sense where um, they tell the entity it's okay to pass over. They tell the entity that this is a new person moved into the house, that your family is deceased and moved on. And then some entities simply don't want to leave the house and they're happy there. And souls that are happy there. And they're very good souls. And then there's other people that have homes that are, that are uh, much older and it causes a problem for them. Because a negative soul, an angry soul, can make your household at unrest. That's one of the things that, that happens. So we never want to trap soul. We never want to have somebody um, uh, that is earthbound. We always want them to cross over. Are there a alien guardians of the galaxy? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, to my knowledge is all life forms have guides and they all have uh, a force that watches over them. See, to my knowledge, again, to my knowledge, God is in everything. So okay. the grass, the leaves, the dog sitting next to me, Steve and I, all, God is in everything. So it is, Isaac says, so there's many guides throughout the galaxy. So there's many guides throughout all of this life forms and um, they watch over us and they put us down our path. Our path is very, very, very important because you come here and you want to accomplish certain specific lessons. And you may come to a hurdle. And just like the, you know, like you have to jump over a hurdle when you're in high school, it's you have an option. I'm going to jump over this and face it, or I'm going to go around it. But then you're going to come to another hurdle, Isaac says. And as you come to another hurdle, now you got two issues that are going on. So you have the one that you just walked around and now the new one. 
And if you do the same thing, now you have three issues that are going on. So every single time something happens and you know that you don't want to do it, that's how you know it's contractual. When you don't want to do it, that's how you know the other side is forcing you into uh, facing what you have to do. So here's what's going to happen. I, I have a feeling, if I know Isaac, is in his course that he's teaching everybody, is he is going to try and help people open up. Because when you're open, when you're awake, when you are aware, you see everything. Now, I know that's kind of hard to believe, like, but Isaac says uh, uh, the way the likeness is when you think about somebody and the phone rings, that's the spiritual connection that you have to them. Or you're thinking about somebody and you look down and they're literally texting you. So that's the spiritual awareness that we're looking for. But he says, I'm looking for something deeper. I'm looking for you to be aware of your contract, not Steve's contract or Phil's contract or your parents' contract or siblings. I'm asking you to be aware of your own contract because if you're able to do that, then you're going to be able to achieve why you came here to Earth. Um, so, and why we came to Earth is very, very special. It's, um, <clears throat> say that again, Isaac. So he says, why you came to earth is very special and it's at very it's very special because you wanted to achieve something very specific you wanted to achieve and grasp these lessons that you didn't learn in a previous lifetime and when you learn those lessons and you come back again you are now that much more advanced. And that's where we have old souls and new souls and, and Nephilims and all of these different types of things that are coming in. So, Steve, I'm gonna ask you for a question in a minute. But, um, so, it, it's all of these, these great things. So Isaac says, but my, my greatest purpose is to help everybody have an awakening, to help everybody have an opening, to help everyone be aware of their chakra system, but most importantly, their own personal contract. And if you're aware of your own personal contract, then you will absolutely succeed in the things that you want to do in life. And that's, that's, that's the most important thing. So, that, Steve, give me a question. Go ahead. <clears throat> Joe wants to know... Uh, Speak loudly, honey. Joe wants to know, do you and Isaac argue? What do you argue about? Ooh-wee! So, Joe's asking, do Isaac and I argue, and what do we argue about? Isaac and I, so I was, I was in Colombia for five days, and um, Isaac and I got into it, and it lasted, I want to say we get into it around 11 o'clock, and at four in the morning, we were still going, and Isaac doesn't shout, Isaac doesn't belittle, Isaac doesn't say, well, you did, Isaac debates. And what he does is he walks you through scenarios and he says, well, what about this? And we could literally talk about that topic for 45 minutes. And what about this? And it continues. But I would never, ever raise my voice to him. And although I have, um, but in a general sense, I don't. I never disrespect. I try not to disrespect him. I'm very uh, mindful of who he is and, and what he is. And most importantly, he's never let me down. So, but we could argue over just about anything. One of the biggest things that we disagree, uh, argue over is when, we're, when I'm on the mower is the topic of tonight. So how, what we're gonna talk about, what we're gonna discuss, how it's gonna be. The other thing is too about Isaac is he's to my left. That's why I keep looking over to my left. Um, is he is the first person I see in the morning next to Steve and then the last person I see at night. But what I wanted to express to you is uh, about what Isaac is able to do. Steve and I were in Vermont and we were visiting a friend at their cabin. And at the bottom of where this river was, I said to Steve, come here, let me see. Because people always ask me, what's it like to be a medium? What, what, what's it like, Phil? Like, what do you see every day that makes this, makes this so draining and so hard? Because everybody thinks like, 
you're just doing readings. You're just repeating what the other side says. But what you don't realize is I sense, see, feel, taste, and emotionally take on how the person died. So my first could be a suicide. My second could be an overdose. My third could be a heart attack. My fourth could be whatever situ situation is, but I take all this on. So what do I see? And this is the best way I can liken it, and I'll tell you the story. So if somebody says to me, look at the moon, the first thing I see are the clouds. Then I see light. Then I see the moon. Then I see the stars. Then I see all of these colors that other people don't see. And... Steve, I, Steve and I were um, at the bottom of in this place in Vermont, and Isaac says, tell Steve to come over here. And Steve put his hand on my shoulder, and he told him to look up. And as he looked up, I said, Steve, what do you see? And I, I was kind of looking to trick him, to be quite honest with you. But he looked up, and he saw exactly what I saw, only because Isaac allowed me to see it. And it was the full Milky Way. It was so spectacular. It was absolutely beautiful. But I was seeing it through Isaac's eyes. And because Steve stands in my energy field, he was able to see it also. But as I explained to you all before, your aura extends six feet from the body in every direction. And if you meet somebody without even shaking their hands. You get a feeling if you like them or dislike them. That's because your energies have already intertwined and registered back to you information about uh, each other. Because Isaac was in my energy field and I was in Isaac's energy field, Steve touching me, he was then able to see what Isaac was showing us. So it was quite remarkable because um, it's never really happened before. So it, well, actually it hasn't happened before. So, um, and I was really, really happy that Steve got to experience that because um, Isaac is, he's, he's dodgy. He's very, very um, limited on who he allows into my life and so on and so forth. So, uh, and, um, and who he talks to. So, he talks to very few people, Catherine, um, um, my dad, uh, Steve, me, and but he's very, he's, uh, my friend Greg, um, he's very, very uh, specific in who he'll share information with. Steve, go ahead. Hmm. Steve, come on now. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you brought me back, you brought me back to the memory. Has anyone else besides you ever seen Isaac? Has anyone else ever beside other than me seen Isaac? So yes, the answer to that question is yes. So um, two other people have seen him, so they have, and uh, it's uh, it's been a really cool situation because see, here's one of the things about Isaac is he's beautiful. He's beautiful because souls are flawless and they're epicene. So there's, you know, their skin is, is just remarkable. He looks young. He's 33. Um, he's 6'6". Six, six. He looks like a vi He's absolutely stunning. So he is. So the people that have seen him have told me exactly what he looked like. But most importantly, what he wore and what he wears. Um, sorry, my accent's coming out. What he wears is his garb from back in, in the day, and I'll explain all of that to you in the class. So, and that's that's part of uh, how I knew they were able to see him. So, other people have sensed him. Other people have absolutely walked in, and they instantly know he's there because um, they feel this presence all of a sudden show up, or the dogs will immediately start reacting, and things like that. Go ahead, honey. Um, Loretta wants to know, is the silver cord real? So that's a great question. Steve and I were just talking about this. So is the silver cord, the umbilical cord, the energetic cord real? And it most certainly is. And let me just tell you this. When it's cut, it's over. So if your guide, not that they would, but if your guide ever cut the cord, if you ever cut the silver cord from... Um, your spirituality, you would you would have a complete shutdown of knowledge and information. And then other times, Isaac says we have this silver cord, this umbilical cord, um, that is with. He's actually telling me to stop saying um, is with other people, and sometimes you have to cut that cord because it's unhealthy, 
and then other times you keep it because you that's your best they're you're just best friends Isaac and I are attached through this cord so Steve and I are attached through this cord and no matter what happens or what is going on that's how all the information is fed to me is through my solar plexus a lot of people think it's through my crown chakra I hear and see Isaac like you hear and see me so it's a little different now for other mediums and other psychics they may see their guide they may hear their guide but very few people see and hear their guide and I don't know again why this happened to me but when I was six years old this is when it all really started to come into full swing so it started to just uh, open up and I just knew I was different so because one night I'll tell you the story before I take another question is um, one night I was sleeping and I woke up and the roof off my house was peeled away it was weird and I, I was wide awake and this hand came down and grabbed me and well grab yeah grab me and it, as it pulled up it's like sawed you know like you're pulling grass out of the ground and it picked up and then flew through the galaxy and then I stopped and I saw th all of the civilization I, I was only seven six and I saw the civilization and I heard a voice say to me, this is where you're from. And then whoosh, straight back into my room. So it was the most fascinating thing I'd ever saw. So, and the most peaceful thing that I ever saw. Um, so Isaac is Icelandic for any, uh, somebody who was just asking. And um, what do you call it? So it's, uh, it was the most remarkable experience that I have. And that's, that's his whole purpose of this course, is he wants to get you in touch with your guide. He wants to get you in touch with your family. He wants to get you in touch with your own spirituality. So that way you don't need to go to a medium. You don't need to do this. You can find your own answers. And that's what we're going to help with. So go ahead, Steve. So do you, like, do you think, speak up. <clears throat> do you think like if I went to the program, I would be able to see my guide? Is that what you're saying? So what Isaac is saying is I'm going to be able to help you see your guide. So if for the people that have signed up, and um, I'm not even sure if there's any more spots left, but the, for the people that have signed up, it's his job is going to be able to, sh to break down the barrier and open up the doorways so that you are able to start to communicate. Because one of the biggest things that happens is when you lose your child, when you lose your sibling, when you lose your friends, when you lose all of that, um, uh, you want to communicate. You want to get sensations, you want to get dreams, you want to get communication. And one of the hardest things that happens is, um, what, one of the hardest things that happens is, you are so blocked and in so much pain that you can't possibly understand how to get the other people through. But once Isaac shows you how to bring them through and how to remove the pain, the pain that you're feeling, that's when they start to lift through. Go ahead, Steve. Does Isaac go to heaven when he's not with you? So, great question. So, when I'm sleeping, what does Isaac do? He goes back to the other side. But because of that umbilical cord, if I wake up, let's say, at 2 in the morning, um, he would be right there. So, um, he, he immediately knows that, that I'm there. But when I'm out cold and I'm sleeping, he's on the other side and, and he's doing his thing. And he's also regenerating. That's what a lot of people don't understand, is that he's regenerating... Um, his own energy because he has put out so much energy during the day. Does Isaac know if the world will ever be at peace again? Well, that's what that's a great question. And one of the things that he's saying is in order for there to be peace, there has to be awareness. Awareness has to be ha has to happen in order for there to be peace. Otherwise, there's just this constant struggle for power. This constant endless struggle who's going to win, what's going to happen, so on and so forth. So um, another thing that people are asking is, it, it, do I have, and I think Catherine just texted me, is there any room left in the classes? And she said, yes. So I'm not sure how much room is left, but uh, I know that you can go on and you can book the class. Um, and if it's available, it'll work. If it's not available, it won't work. So, um, but I would just go on to philquinn.com and, and try to get a seat as much as you possibly can. Go ahead, Steve. Stacy asks, does Isaac have souls on his side that he confers with and 
who are they? So does I, so, all right, so this, this is kind of a tough uh, answer, and I'll just give it to you. So the other side is made up of a council, and the council determines where all the guides go, who they go to, how they go there, so on and so forth, how much they're allowed to intervene, if the soul is doing absolutely nothing, um, what do you call it, it's a... Uh, it, it, the council will say, well, you can't intervene because the soul, the soul isn't doing anything in order to help um, me themselves. But if, this, if I am doing something to help myself, then the council says, go ahead, Isaac, you can help him and do whatever you need to do. So um, that's really who runs the show is the council on the other side. So and I know everybody wants to say it's God, but God's pretty busy. So um, the council is, is who runs that. The council also determines where the angels and the archangels go. So, um, again, Isaac is a guide, neither an angel or an archangel. So he is limited in the sense of he couldn't pull me out of a fire um, because he's not an angel. Angels are given all of God's uh, power and free will. And then um, a, a guide will warn you that there's going to be a fire. A guide will warn you that there's going to be something. Hello, Jim, or I haven't talked to you in a long time. And a guide will warn you, don't go down this alleyway. Don't pass this. And you'll get this guttural feeling of what's happening. Someone just asked a really nice question if Isaac helped me talk with Denise, and he has many times. But unfortunately, I cannot talk with her unless I'm with Catherine or her husband, Wayne. And um, I can't use my gift for myself. I cannot use my gift for myself because it's cheating. Meaning that uh, I would be, again, sorry Isaac for saying that, um, but it would be cheating on my path. I still have to go through the same pain that you all go through. I still have to go through the same struggles. I still have to go through the same hurdles that everybody goes through. So, But what helps me evolve is that when I do readings, I learn from you all. And therefore, that's what helps me grow, and that's what helps me evolve, and that's what helps me do all of those things. So um, I learn a lot just from um, the people that I read. Go ahead, Steve. Um, how come you don't talk about Jesus? So why don't I talk about Jesus? I don't talk about Jesus because there's a lot of people here that have different religions. So, and that means I would be boiling spirituality down to uh, Christianity. And spirituality is not Christianity. It's not, they're not one and the same. So it's, um, you know, Christianity is for people who are fearful of going to hell, and spirituality is for people who have been to hell. And that's that old saying that they say. But I don't talk about Jesus because it's, um, I, you know, I would talk about Judaism, I would talk about Buddhism, I would talk, have to talk about everything, and, and I'm just simply not that knowledgeable in all of them. So, um, I was raised to believe, obviously I have a cross on me, but I was raised to believe uh, Christ exists, so on and so forth. But my take and my reaction is, when I went to the cathedrals, I go there to meditate. And prayer is a form of meditation for me. So, and I say my prayers and that connects me. I learned that from my mother. So my mother, every day, rosary, blah, 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 the whole kit and caboodle. So lights a candle, God bless her for everybody. But um, so when I go into cathedrals, it's not just, I don't just talk to Jesus. I talk to God. I talk to Buddha. I talk to everybody and I ask them to hear to me. But a lot of the times when I go into any sort of cathedral or any sort of church or any sort of, like we were just in Cartagena and we were in this fabulous church. And um, I, I just, I can't say enough beautiful things about it, but it, it was just so special and so grounding that I was actually talking to angels and, and that's who I was communicating with. And I was, I, I just kept calling on them because I could feel this powerful sense um, that this church had so much history. It was built in 1700 and I could go on and go on about it, but it was, um, it was just quite remarkable. So go ahead, Steve. Um, Come on, Steve. Sorry, hold on. Do you see angels in the church? Do I see angels in the church? Yes, I do. And how I know an angel is coming is, and how I know a soul is coming, is I hear bells ringing. So each time I do a reading, so like tomorrow when I start doing my reading, so about five minutes before my reading starts, I hear these little bells. And that's how I know the soul has found me. 
and they know to, to come into the room and talk to me through that communication. So, meaning they're not in your room because it would be hard for me to hear them. They come into my room and then they pull from the energy around uh, me. So, but they know not to pull from my aura because I would get exhausted. So, um, but what do you call it? That's, that's how that works. Go ahead, honey. Um, <clears throat> how can we discover our life purpose? So, how do you discover your life purpose? And that's what uh, this class that Isaac wants to teach about is discovering your life's purpose is discovering your path. It's discovering what you came here to do. And that's what we're trying, that's what I want to show you all is there's ways of discovering what you came here to do. Look, not everybody came here to set the world on fire. Some people just came here to, to raise their children, to have a life, to, you know, just to, um, to learn certain things. But no matter what you do, you're always, always going to learn. No matter what you do, you're always going to evolve. But one of the things Isaac says is evolution is extraordinarily painful. So the more you evolve, the more pain you have to deal with. Because as humans, we were taught to bury it as deep as possible. As humans, we were taught not to share our emotions. We were taught not to cry in public. We were taught not to let anybody know what goes on behind closed doors. We were taught not to let anybody know how you're really feeling. We were taught to fake it till you make it. Isaac's saying is, we have to shed that in order to find your life's purpose. We have to shed that to become your authentic self. When you become your authentic self, you will um, then discover your purpose. Do angels have contracts? They do not. An angel has a contract to guide you. And how that works is, when you're on the other side, and before you come to earth, you are paired up with a guide, an angel or an archangel and I haven't seen many archangels I'm going to be very honest with you but it's um I have seen many angels they're absolutely remarkable remarkable beings I can't even hear them so they speak at such a high frequency I can't understand them so Isaac has to translate uh, for me what they're saying uh, to the individual but I, I can't understand them uh, because they speak so fast and they speak a language that I just don't understand whatsoever. So I hope that answers your question. Um, go ahead, Steve. Laura wants to know, when I meditate, I see white and purple colors. Oh, cool. So, Phil, when I meditate, I see white, I see purple. So what you're seeing is the third eye opening up. This controls the past, the present, the future. And the white that you're seeing is awesome because that means there's an angel in the room. A white aura means that you have an angel as a guide. So that's how I can tell who, who has what. If they have a guide, if they, I'm sorry, they have, yes, you have an angel as a guide. Or if you have a regular guide, or if you have an archangel. Again, I haven't seen many archangels, so I haven't. So you have to be in pretty dire straits for an archangel to show up. Meaning that um, your kid could be suffering addiction, you could be in an abusive relationship, you could be all of those things. So. For an archangel to show up, it's it's pretty serious, so it is. And um, they're there to protect, they're there to help, and they're there to bring them over. And then sometimes there are simple purposes to help you die, meaning that you are going to pass, so they bring you to the other side. And then there's, again, as I said before, there's other souls that just don't want to pass over to the other side. Go ahead, Steve. Uh, Avery wants to know. Does Halloween mean anything to the spiritual world? So does Halloween mean anything to the spirit world? Isaac has never mentioned it to me other than it was the death of the Knights of Templar. So uh, Friday the 13th is when the church decided that it was the Knights of Templar became too powerful and they executed them all. Well, not them all, but the majority of them. So it was then deemed by the church to be unholy. And that's what gave it its rep. But actually, Friday the 13th is one of my luckiest days. It's very bizarre, so it is. So, but um, it didn't happen, um, meaning that it it doesn't have any relevance to the other side. Go ahead, <clears throat> Where do we go when we die? And do animals also go there? Where do we go when we die? We cross over into the the plane called the other side, which is which you know, for lack of a better word, is heaven. And every living thing, trees, ants, bees, anything God created crosses to the other side. 
the awesome thing is, is if you're close with your pets like we are, Steve and I are, um, and Catherine, if your dogs wait for you, so they do. So your cats wait for you, your animals wait for you, and that those souls will be there. Now, if, you know, we live much longer than, than our animals, so the same thing animal can recycle back to you. And um, as it recite, it can come back into the form of another dog or another cat because it, they live such a short lifetime, but they do wait for us and they, uh, they know what's happening there. Can my son's guides hear me when I ask him to protect him from uh, harm and evil? Absolutely. So they know that you're praying. They know that you're asking. They know that you're looking for. They know that you're looking to look after this. Now, however, that they can't do is make your kid make, not make good choices. So what I mean by that is if your kid's going to make a bad choice, they can give them the feeling, don't do this but they can't stop them from doing it. So, unless they are an angel. If there's an angel involved, they will literally remove them from the situation, from the room, um, and tell them, just give them the situation of what's happening. Um, go ahead, Steve. So, Allison wants to know, <laughs> do our guides and angels get annoyed at us? Do our guides and angels get annoyed with us? Um, meaning that, do they get frustrated? And the answer is no. They're very, very patient. Um, they're, they're very, very... Patience the only word I can tell you because Isaac is extraordinarily patient. Um, they don't get annoyed. They don't get um, pissed off. They don't get any of those things. Forgive my language. They, they simply um, just wait until you get the lesson. And I mean they will wait until you get a lesson. Not all the lessons. If you skip lesson one, they'll wait until you get lesson one. They don't care about two. They care about one. They care about getting out of the gate. Um, when our reading was interrupted last month, I'm sorry that it was interrupted. Um, I have to figure, and we'll figure that out. Catherine will sort that out for you. Was my deceased son disappointed on the other side? Absolutely not. Once your child crosses to the other side, your the soul is completely at rest. If your child is disappointed. They're going to be disappointed at me that the reading was interrupted because they probably had a mouthful of information to share with you about their life and what was going on and blah, blah, blah. So, Dottie, hopefully that we got that straightened out. If not, um, Catherine will help me get that straightened out for you. Go ahead, Steve. Mary Ellen wants to know, <clears throat> do you believe in the law of attraction? Do I believe in the law of attraction? Isaac says, it's the thing that is so awesome that what you project is what you attract. So if you sit around and you think negative things, the only thing that's going to come into your life are negative things. When I, when I stopped drinking years ago, somebody once said to me, chess players don't hang out with football players. Like-minded people hang out with like-minded people. And what I mean by that is, of course, chess players can hang out for football players, but what you project is what you attract. You, so if you're in a vibrant state, high vibrant state of spirituality, you're only going to be surrounded with good things. The other thing that happens is your aura literally pushes out the negativity, will push people out of your life. When you get spiritual, when you, when you become aware, when you become spiritually awakened, when you become spiritually here, it, your, your guides push out all the things in your life that are not working for you. They push out all the things in your life that are no good. So it is. So you don't even know that it's happening. So it's not. So it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. But they keep you safe. They keep you uh, protected. They keep you, most importantly, um, on your right path. And I keep saying path because we are here for a journey. And what I'm trying to tell you all is this. If you come across a situation and your gut tells you, I don't want to do this, that's how you know you have to do this. Now, I'm talking about within reason and safety. But you know, I don't want to do this. I, 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 I don't want to take this test. I don't want to stand up on stage. That's the moment of growth is when you get up on stage and you say what you have to say. I remember the first time I did Facebook Live, my legs gave out. 
when Denise was with me and she told me it was going to be okay. Um, and she taught me how to do this before she passed, you know, just from being a news anchor. And it's, um, I remember she held my hand and she's like, you're going to get through this. You're going to do this. But when the camera's on you, you feel funny, man. It's, it's really bizarre. So it is. Go ahead, honey. Do you have the same guide from birth to death? Do you have the same guide from birth to death? Isaac says, Phil and I have an um, endless bond, so he and I will be here from start to finish. You, as a person, as you evolve, you start to get new guides. So let's just say you're in, um, I, make, I often make this likeness, you're in med school. You would have a guide that would help you um, through med school. Then you become a doctor. You would have a guide that was a doctor that would help you get through that. And then let's just say you're 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 going through a divorce. You would have a guide that would I'm just throwing something negative out here. You would have a guide that would help you get through that because they've experienced that. So you do change guides. It's not all the same time. However, emotionally, your family typically stays with you throughout the whole thing. So it is. So they tell they tell you it um, over and over. Not over and over. Isaac says, but. They will emotionally help you through what they need to help you through. So that's the biggest thing that you have to know. So um, your 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 guide will change, but you will always have a guide that, that that is there for you. Go ahead, Steve. Nikki wants to know: My son passed from addiction. Is he okay and safe now? So Nikki, I'm terribly sorry to hear that. And the answer to that question, Isaac says, is yes. I cannot answer that. Um, but, uh, so he said, he's telling me yes, and would be safe. So let's just say you and I were to have a reading, um, your child would come through instantaneously and say what happened and what took place and, um, where they are and how they've been communicating with you. And one of the things that they do is they come in dreams to try and let you know that they're there. But one of the things I get, and I get it all the time, I'm so pissed off, Phil, I'm not getting dreams. Why is that? Well, when you lose your your child, when you lose your daughter, when you lose your husband or wife or your friend or whatever, a lot of people go to the doctor. And they go on meds because they're in so much pain. So they are, which blocks out the dreams. I'm not telling you not to go on meds. So, but it blocks out the dreams and things like that there. So, um, and then you have the high level of stress. Then you have the high level of pain. Then you have the disconnection from the crown chakra. So it takes a while to get the communication through. It takes a while for the information to start to come in. So it takes about three months for the soul to really to be able to break in. And that's what happens. So it is. So um, what do you call it? it it's, uh, it's, it's, it's remarkable the way it takes place. Go ahead, Steve. Uh, Nikki wants to know, is there a reason some people have two or more guides? So some people require double guides because they're, they're doing multiple things, number one. And the other thing is, Isaac says, is they're an old soul and they're helping people. So they were required uh, multiple guides. So with me, I help people the best I can through Isaac, but he's been gone so long that he has extensive knowledge. So um, more so than a soul that would be gone, you know, 20, 30 years, he's been gone hundreds of years. So, and he's absorbed just endless information. So he has. So, and then he studied in the Hall of Souls for so long. Um, what he called, that's how, that's how he collected all of his information in order to create um, the information that we're going to talk about on the 5th. But he also created a, a program with me in order to help you find your purpose. So, and it's almost complete and we're going to be offering that class again, um, so, you know, in the future. Go ahead, Steve. Albert wants to know, when we come back in the next life, can we go back to a time in the past? When you come back or reincarnate in this life, can you go back in the past? No. You have to come back into this lifetime. However, when you cross over to the other side, you're able to view all of history. That's the beauty. You're able to see every single thing that happened. You're able to see all the things that took place and you can study it for as long as you want. Let's say art was your thing. You would get to be go through the Renaissance and so on and so forth. And you, you would get to paint. You would see this. I have literally been 
doing readings and sometimes I get distracted when I'm doing readings. I'll be talking to the soul and behind them there's an opening obviously because they're coming through from the other side. And I have watched people, I've watched a person paint the leaves on a tree gold and because they were an artist so they were and I, 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 I've seen I've seen grass so green and beautiful and long and and it, it just it just looks like like it's a movie so it has so but everything is divine everything is peaceful I've seen people cook I smell food even though you don't have a physical body to maintain you can still eat you can still drink you can still play golf you can still do all of those wonderful things so but most souls most people who pass over they go into a state when they know the family's feeling better and then they they pass over to the other side and then they continue to check on them from the other side they don't necessarily always show themselves go ahead Steve I'll take one more question but our loved ones that have passed do they miss us our loved ones that passed do they miss us a hundred percent and Isaac says that's what makes them come through on a reading is if they didn't miss you they would never come through but I will tell you this you have a reading with me and you make an appointment in a month to have another reading if you haven't done anything to change your current path the soul will not come through because all they're going to say is you still have to do a B and C so people have multiple readings with other psychics and mediums I do not read people multiple times so unless you've created and gone past and gotten to where you needed to be so that's what it's all about remember it's the first hurdle it's like a game of sorry so the only way to get out of that you have to roll that number and you got to get out that door and you have two options you can go back into your hiding hole or you can keep going trying to get to the end and the most important thing is every time you get to a hurdle ask God for the strength ask your guides ask your friends ask your family give me the strength to do this and it's like Isaac says 90% of it is showing up. 10% is doing your job. But 90% of it is showing up. So that's what you have to keep in mind. Um, what do you call it? I have a personality disorder. Can I choose between taking pills or being spiritual? Um, I have to treat myself. And the answer to the question Isaac says is, your medication would not interfere with your ability to be in spiritual. So you stay with your medication, your spirituality still comes. That's, it, there, that's not something that you would give up in order to try and fix blah, blah, blah. So go ahead, Steve. Kate wants to know, do guides have a sense of humor? Do guides have a sense of humor? Mine doesn't. <laughs> I'll tell you this. He has the same sense of humor Steve does, and it's very dry. And Isaac is very dry. Um, my previous guide, his name was Red Feather, was hysterical. Hysterical. But Isaac is very, very serious. And serious in the sense of he's been gone so long, he doesn't use humor to deflect. He says what needs to be said, and he says it how it needs to be said. But most importantly, he says it with kindness. So he does. So again, for anybody else that wants to sign up for Isaac's course, just go to philquinn.com. If, if there's available slots, everything will work. If there's not, it'll just say it's cut off. I love you all. Thank you all for tuning in. I will see you again next week. And when I get ready to open up my calendar again, I will certainly let you know on Facebook Live and um, proceed ahead. But right now, it's... Um, Right now, I'm keeping my book closed. Just It's open until uh, April. It's already filled up. But um, my book is staying closed just until I get through all these other heavy uh, things that I have going on. So, uh, again, for, anybody, for everybody that tuned in, thank you. I love you. Steve, thank you for reading the questions. You're thank a man. You. So you are. And I hope you all have a wonderful night. I hope you all got to enjoy this day. 
And again, anybody that needs me, just go to philquinn.com. I did stop my waiting list because it just got too out of control. So there's no waiting list either, guys. So there's not. Um, there is, again, the classes are going to be the way to go. And uh, if you want to, you know, you'll see readings in them. You'll see all of this. I mean, I don't know what he's going to do on the 5th, so I don't. So anyway, I'll stop rambling. I love you all. You have a great night. And take care if you need me, philquinn.com. Bye.